With the Cardinals prepared to make trades before the deadline, today we're going to take an in-depth look at one of the names that the team is rumored to be targeting. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan, and I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. That way you're interacting with us. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. So we're doing a special Saturday edition of the show today because uh, I had to do some traveling at the end of this past week. So I uh, put out a new episode yesterday, but I owed you one for, for this week. So why not do it on Saturday when we've got a split doubleheader <laughs> for the Cardinals and the Nationals after the rain that uh, took place overnight on uh, on Friday night in St. Louis. So. Before we get to uh, what happened in game one, because that just wrapped up a little bit ago, uh, let's get back to the fun stuff to talk about. And that's uh, what's going on with the trade deadline. You know, the Cardinals let their intentions know officially uh, that they are going to be making some moves here at the trade deadline. We don't know who's going. We don't know who's staying. We don't know who they're targeting for the most part. But we know that they're going to make some moves of some sort. Um, the guys they probably will make available via trade are the the names we've brought up for a couple of weeks now. Jordan Montgomery, Jack Flaherty, Jordan Hicks, Chris Stratton are the most likely to move because those guys can become free agents at the uh, end of the season and they don't have any player or team options left. As far as position players go, it's merely speculation on who is available and who is not. We don't know for certain who they are shopping, but it seems like Outside of people like Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arnato, Jordan Walker, and Lars Newbar, anybody could go. Any nobody is untradeable, and the Cardinals would at least listen on pretty much anybody on the roster except for those four. Now, John Mozeliak stated they they aren't going to just give players away. They want legitimate value in return that can help them for 2024 and beyond. Yesterday, you saw a small list from STLToday.com's Derek Gould of players that the team might have interest in according to his sources. And one of the names that I've seen brought up in multiple places, not just in Derek Gould's article, uh, but in other publications has been that of pitcher Logan Gilbert of the Seattle Mariners. So let's, I figured we might as well take a look at this guy. So uh, you can get some background on him that might shed a little light on why the team would be targeting him in a deal. Now, Logan Gilbert is a 26 year old right-hander. Throw a little picture up there on YouTube for, for you so you know who he is. Uh, 26-year-old, six foot six, 215-pound right-hander, uh, comes out of Florida, is where he grew up, did not get drafted out of high school. He ended up attending Stetson College in Florida, which you may not be familiar with at all because it's not a, a big-name school, but it is part of the, uh, the ASUN po- uh, conference where he had an outstanding career. He was really, really good in college. He he played three years there, was the conference pitcher of the year, not once, but twice, both his sophomore and junior seasons, and when it combined 21-2 and two over those years in college. He enters the 2018 draft and ends up getting selected 14th overall by the Seattle Mariners. Cardinals prospect Matthew Libertor went number 16 that year to the Rays. The Cardinals took Nolan Gorman at number 19, so just kind of, putting it out there so you know uh, what era we're talking about as far as prospects wise. Uh, He played at three different levels in 2019, amassing a 10 and five record with a 2.13 ERA. You then had the COVID year in 2020 where he didn't pitch at all because he was in the minor leagues and we didn't have minor league baseball that year. Then in 2021, he was up at the major league level at at age 24, where he went six and five ERA 4.68 in 24 starts. So a, a solid beginning to his major league career. Like if Matthew Libertor had those numbers this year, we'd probably be pretty darn happy, but he's been much worse than that. Uh, In 2022, 
Logan Gilbert improves to 13 and 6 with a 3.20 ERA in 32 starts. He strikes out 174 hitters in 185 and two-thirds innings. And so far this season, he's seven and five with a 3.66 ERA with 106 strikeouts in 108 in a third innings. He relies on four main pitches: the fastball, slider, curveball, and he throws a split finger. Now his fastball averages at around 95, which in this day and age is really not all that hard. <laughs> you know, if if it's not 99 to 100, that's not really elite level fastball. Uh, he throws that 41.2% of the time. He throws a slider 27.8%, then the curve at 16.4, then the split finger at 14.4. They listed him that he threw a sinker four times this year. I don't know if that's something that he's working on, but apparently that's where the other percentage points went to. Um, we know that the Cardinals are looking for swing and miss stuff. You know, that that that's the type of pitcher they're looking for. They're trying to get away from the pitch to contact type of hitters now that changes in the shift have been made. Uh, it's not working as well, obviously. So uh, they're trying to find more swing and miss stuff from whatever pitchers they're going after. Logan Gilbert is not exactly a power pitcher. He His whiff percentage is in the 52nd percentile of the league, but he's up a tick to the 60th percentile when it comes to strikeout percentage. But those aren't elite levels by any means. He does have a very good chase rate, and, and that's up in the 80th percentile. And that's thanks to his slider and his split finger, which uh, he uses as his main put-away pitches. So gets a lot of swing and miss on those. Batters are hitting just 125 against the splitter, 167 on the curveball, 196 against the slider, but then they're up to 297 against his fastball. Obviously, you look at all this and you're like, yeah, Logan Gilbert would be a welcome addition to the Cardinals rotation. So my immediate question is, why on earth would the Mariners want to trade him? What, what, what is going on here? He, along with Luis Castillo and George Kirby, are the team's best pitchers right now because former Cy Young winner Robbie Ray out for the year, Tommy John. Bryce Miller is out right now. He's dealing with a, uh, a blister. He'll be back on Sunday, but Bryce Miller, uh, somebody that uh, is a young arm as well. They've also got uh, Marco Gonzalez, who was out with injury. Uh, Brian Wu is a rookie that has had a, a very good rookie season, but He's going to be on a kit, uh, pitch count for this year. You know, as a rookie, they're not going to overextend him. So e eventually he's going to probably get shut down at some point. So I'm not really sure and understand why or how the team can justify trading him unless they were getting a major bat in return. And the Cardinals just don't have that to offer. You know, if you're not going to trade a Nolan Arenado, Paul Goldschmidt, Jordan Walker, Laura, Lars Newtbar. I don't think the Mariners are going to be all that interested in shipping Gilbert out to get somebody other than one of those guys. Uh, the Mariners aren't aren't going to give up, arguably, their top young arm for, say, Tommy Edmond or Brendan Donovan. It, it would take a lot more than that for them to not just hang up the phone laughing at you. I did see one site because I was going through, you know, seeing what other people are saying about Gilbert getting traded and most places are just like, I have no idea why he would get traded. Uh, but I saw one side who was like, all right, I'll, I'll bite on this one. We'll go with the baseball trade values.com website. And they had Gilbert going to the Cardinals. Are you ready for this? For Brendan Donovan, Mason Wynn and Gordon Graceffo. So uh, <laughs> Mason Wynn, I, I don't see that happening. Um, the win inclusion for sure immediately ends that discussion because I believe the Cardinals have every intention on giving Wynn a chance to take over the shortstop position next year. I wouldn't be surprised considering the way the season has gone if Mason Wynn is up on this team this year now. I, I wouldn't have said that coming into the year. I would have thought they would have kept him at Memphis the entire time. Now you kind of want to see what he can do at the major league level, don't you? And I also don't think the uh, the Cardinals are looking to move Brendan Donovan at all. Uh, I, would, I would think they would try to move Tommy Yadby before – Brendan Donovan, just because uh, of age and price and those things. I was listening to the guys at Locked on Mariners. And when they brought up, they were asked, they were doing like a mailbag episode. They were asked about trading Gilbert. And their answer immediately was no, no. They're, they're, and they really didn't go into much discussion about it. Just saying that he's a legit top young arm. And unless they're getting somebody whose name is like, you know, Lu Luis Robert uh, was a name that they brought up. Uh, they also brought up Albies from from the Braves, 
they were like, why, why, why would we even consider moving him? So I just don't see that happening. Uh, could you go after Wu or Miller instead? Uh, lower prospects beneath uh, a Logan Gilbert. Uh, that that would be more realistic. Uh, I, I believe that they would at least have a discussion maybe about those guys. So as much as I'm hearing the name uh, of Gilbert, and uh, I know that seeing his name up there was like kind of exciting. You're like, ooh, could the Cardinals pull that up? I wouldn't get your hopes up. <laughs> I really wouldn't. Uh, we're gonna share with what the share what the fans are saying about the ongoing trade rumors. We'll do that next here on Locked On Cardinals. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right, so the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right, and even more importantly, fits right the first time around. Have you ever ordered something online, and then you get it, and it's not what you wanted, and then you got to go back and forth and back and forth trying to figure out the right item that you need and right size and it's even worse if you had to do that with your car because you kind of need that to get around so all you got to do is add your ride to my garage look for the green check to know that the part will fit or you get your money back because just like in sports confidence is the name of the game when you shop on ebay motors and with over 122 million parts to choose from you'll be back in the game in no time which is what you want because you feel so helpless when you don't have your your car ready to go and nobody likes that feeling and it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right price on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Cardinals battle the Nationals again tonight and tomorrow at Bush Stadium. And uh, you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Thank you again for making Locks on Cardinals your first listen every day. Leave comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter anytime you guys want to. They can be negative. They can be positive. It doesn't really matter. It, it just discussion is always something that uh, I'm interested in. I want your feedback. It's always welcome and encouraged. And uh, obviously, our last episode talked about some of the trade rumors that are, are going around. And uh, I wanted to take a look at some of uh, the things that the fans and listeners are saying about some of these possible deals and what they think about um uh, what the team might do moving forward after hearing what John Mosellock had to say. Uh, MW Conservative says, Flaherty, DeYoung, O'Neal, all need to go. <laughs> we we have others. Um, Libertor, Yepes, Gorman, Carlson. Do not give players away one by one. Try putting a package together for once. And do not decimate the already inadequate starting pitching. Mo protecting his image by selling the players out while saying nothing about the coaching staff. Um, he did mention the coaching staff, and the players have mentioned the coaching staff, that they like their coaching staff and they support their coaching staff. There's been multiple quotes about uh, players and obviously Mo having the back of uh, Ali Marmel and, and the staff saying that this is really not on them, that it's something that is more than just coaching that is the problem here. Um, and when you bring up the names here, I'm still I'm surprised by how many people have jumped back on the Let's trade Nolan Gorman train again. I realize it, it was a rough June. He's having a rough July as well. Hasn't been much better. But in those first two months, Nolan Gorman was one of the best hitters in the National League in all of baseball. Uh, hit 272 over the first two months, 13 bombs, 41 RBIs, OBP of 360, slugged 595, his OPS at 915 over his first 170 games as a major league hitter. Remember last year, he was a rookie, had a real tough time, and got shipped back down to Memphis. This year, comes up, makes adjustments, and just goes off in those first couple of months. But over his first 170 career games, he's got 31 home runs and 87 RBIs. He's still only 23 years old, guys. Now, if you could get an elite starter, and Nolan Gorman has to be a part of that package, I understand trading him because pitching is obviously the most important thing right now. you got to get some. But I got no issues <laughs> keeping Nolan Gorman uh, and having him continue to learn to be a major league hitter. And defensively, I think he's shown flashes where he's been better than uh, perhaps what we thought he was going to be. Still has five errors. Still is not a great defensive player. I get that. But he obviously can DH. 
He can give you uh, innings at second base. He can give you innings at third base when no one needs to get off his feet. I like that. And I'm not actively shopping Nolan Gorman. Again, if you're going to get an elite starting pitcher in return, I understand why he needs to be in a package. But he's not somebody where I'm like, get rid of him. I like me some Nolan Gorman. I, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not ready to move on from him if you don't have to. Uh, Sammy Zar five four zero four says Hicks is a solid piece, but the fact is he's a one hundred ERA plus with a four point zero three ERA for his career. He's been a whopping one war for his entire career. I know he seemed to take a step in the right direction in the last two months, but why are you so sure this is just the new Hicks moving forward? Sammy, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure about much of anything when it comes to this team. Um, I just don't know how letting go a 26-year-old pitcher who throws 104 and can be as dominant as Jordan Hicks can be, how letting him go is a good thing. It just doesn't add up to me. If I if I say that out loud, I'm like 26, throws 104 crazy movement is just starting to figure things out at the major league level. Just let him walk. That's the idea that you think we should do that. And Hey, if you got to trade him and then something you can get a good deal and something comes back, um, I get it. I, I do, but I'm not, I, he's not somebody I, I want to just let go and walk in free agency. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, he also states here, dude hasn't performed consistently since 2019. I feel like Hicks is the exact type of guy who Mo would sign to an extension, regress back to his career norms, then everybody rips into Mo for extending somebody with such a mediocre career. Um, I know his COVID numbers dipped. Let me look these up real quick. I know his COVID numbers are after COVID because he didn't pitch the COVID year. Remember, he opted out. Um, his numbers dipped in 21 and 22. But... 2018, ERA plus 108. 2019, 135. Coming into today, I know he didn't have a great outing today uh, in that 10th inning, but he was at 109 uh, this year. And with the bullpen in shambles, like the way it has been, I, I just subtracting arguably your best arm that's healthy, because I, I would still put Helsley above Hicks, but arguably your best arm right now just doesn't seem like a positive move to me. And I just don't know who you plan on getting to fix the bullpen. If you're letting guys like that walk, uh, J bail two, four, seven, nine says, I don't understand why we just wouldn't try to bring back Monty Flaherty and Hicks. They are all in their prime and pitching in. It is one of our main weaknesses. I understand Flaherty has had injury problems and inconsistencies, but that's why you offer him a smaller money type deal for two or three years. Add a true ace with other pieces we have and build a rotation of the new ace, Monty, Michaelis, Flaherty, then Libby or Graceffo. Keep Hicks and build Penn around Housley and Hicks. Get rid of Gallegos and Strat. Um, well, Jay Bale, you can most certainly try to resign these guys, and I'm sure Mo will have a discussion with them. Um, but what I worry about is that someone will outbid the, outbid the Cardinals if it gets to that. When when those guys become free agents, if you don't trade them, you keep them. They still want to see what the, the market's going to offer them. And somebody outbids the Cardinals in like a big way. And because somebody always overpays, don't they? It doesn't seem that way. Somebody will always overpay. And the Cardinals aren't one of those teams that does that. They, they wouldn't overpay for Albert Pujols to keep him arguably the greatest Cardinal hitter of all time. And they, and they wouldn't go to that next level to keep him. So they're not going to do it for Jordan Montgomery or Jack Flaherty or Jordan Hicks. And then you lose them anyway. So why not try to trade them now? And you don't have to trade them, but you test. You see what people are willing to give up. And if it's a, a good amount of pieces to help fill the holes for next year and beyond, you pull the trigger. Now, do you trust John Mosellock to make those deals? You don't really have a choice because he's the guy that's going to decide ultimately whether or not they go and who they go for. Uh, do I know that Monty and Flaherty don't want to come back? No, I, I don't have a, a for certain answer that they've said, we don't want to be Cardinals anymore. But when you look at this ugly season, uh, you look at the comments from, from Jordan Montgomery before the season started, how he wasn't approached in spring training. Um, 
you hear about Jack Flaherty perhaps wanting to go back to the West Coast. I don't see them accepting smaller contracts to stick around here as far as like your years, like giving them two or three years with whatever the Cardinals would offer. I just don't see that. I feel like a team will give one or both of them at least five years. I, I just foresee that happening. Um, and staying here after not winning and having all of this, ugh, the 2023 has been I, probably not all that appealing <laughs> for either of them. And like I said, especially if they're offered more money elsewhere, I'm certainly interested in keeping Hicks. I, I, I keep saying that uh, I'm going to die on that hill. I, I, I want to keep Hicks around, teaming him with Housley. Whenever he gets healthy, I think that's a great idea. I, I think that's where you start building your bullpen from. I don't think detracting them out of there is a great idea. The bullpen needs some serious health <laughs> upgrades, and I don't know who it is you're going to get that's better than either Hicks or Helsley. If you trade one or both of them away, I haven't gone and looked ahead to see what bullpen arms might be available uh, as far as uh, free agents this offseason. But again, are the Cardinals somebody who's going to go out bid other teams who are trying to get these guys? You know, does St. Louis still appeal? to free agents as much as it might have been a couple of years ago, especially with how things have gone crazy with Wilson Contreras this year. Um, you said get rid of Gallegos. He's still under control with the team until 2026. Just signed him to an extension. He's probably not going anywhere unless he's traded. Uh, Stratton's a free agent after the season, so he's another guy who could be moved at the deadline if somebody wants him. He's been strong. I don't, I don't mind bringing Chris Stratton back. I don't have an issue with that. I don't think he's been one of the major problems that we've had uh, in this bullpen. He obviously hasn't been a huge solution or they'd be better, but you need arms. And if they're not coming from your, uh, from your, your, your system, you got to find them somewhere. And if Chris Stratton, somebody you want to keep around, I, I would talk to him about that. Uh, injury updates and a quick recap on game one. We'll do that next on locked on Cardinals. Looking your best this summer, but also staying cool and sweat-free should be a goal for everyone. Uh, I walked the dog yesterday, and it was 98 in St. Louis, and we were just cooking out there. Had my bird dogs on and was completely comfortable, waist down. <laughs> Up here, I was a sweaty mess, and it was, it was gross. And the bird dogs, they kept me dry. They kept me cool, and that's a fantastic thing in summers in, in, in St. Louis because uh, the bird dogs do just that. They've cracked the code on providing the exact needs for you this summer. The comfort-wise, stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg to give you a truly sculpted look, but they don't restrict and bind you the way that other brands like Lululemon do. Uh, they use a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, so they look great, and they also feel great. They stretch, so to give you that, that way slimmer fit, which is the look these days without having to sacrifice movement. Sweaty spots in the summertime, you know how it is, guys. You guys get sweaty in certain areas that we won't get too graphic with, but you don't have to worry about those embarrassing looking wet spots and, and sweat spots and smelly spots that we go through in the summers because they use anti-stink sweat whacking, uh, wicking fra fabric that uh, keeps you cool, keeps you dry all day long. Worked for me yesterday. Walking the dog, it'll work for you too. It'll work on the golf course. It'll work when you're hanging out by the pool. It'll work when you're going to uh, amusement parks with the kids, going to ball games. They're going to help you. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Enter that promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Once again, the Cardinals are home again tonight, game two of this split doubleheader. And, uh, of course, tomorrow in the afternoon uh, against the Nationals, you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast uh, the rest of this weekend with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Injury updates on a number of players. Thank you to Katie Wu from The Athletic for dropping all the knowledge that uh, I'm going to pass along to you here. Uh, Ryan Helsley threw off a mound today, so that's progress. I haven't heard how he felt after that, but throwing off a mound today. Adam Wainwright is scheduled to do the same on Tuesday. I do know that his shoulder apparently feeling much better after getting multiple injections in that pitching shoulder that was bothering him. Inflammation, whatever was causing issues, got it shot up, feeling a lot better. 
so that's good news. Maybe we'll we'll see a, a glimpse of the the old Wainwright over the last couple of months of the season here. Hopefully, he'll get to that 200th win. Uh, Tyler O'Neill went two for four with an RBI for Memphis. He's going to be DHing today. We'll play the field on Sunday and could be activated on Monday. Uh, Andrew Kisner has been cleared to return to the team from his growing injury has not been activated yet because the team apparently, according to Katie Wu is contemplating carrying three catchers again. If you are not going to play Yvonne Herrera, then send him back to Memphis and let him play there. I beg of you do not stick him at the end of this bench. Like you did with trace Pereira and let him rot. How is he going to get better if he's not playing? Don't do that. Tommy Edmond will need more than uh, the minimum time on the IL stint. He did receive an injection for that uh, wrist that's bothering him, but he's not going to be swinging a bat for a few more days. Brandon Donovan, who is still hitting, obviously. You saw him in the game uh, today. Will continue his throwing program. Hopes to continue avoiding the IL. And as far as that first game went today, Cardinals lose it 7-5. to five. Uh, they give up three runs in the fifth inning without the Nationals even recording a hit. That's what losing teams do. Three errors, two throwing mistakes by Contreras, one by Arenado, two of your pillars that you're building around, helping uh, turn that inning into a mess. Uh, they contributed to their uh, to that inning that where Palante. Wasn't great. Walked two more in his one and a third innings of work. Did he deserve to give up three runs? No, but he still didn't look good. I'm kind of over the Palante thing. I kind of want to send him back to Memphis and uh, see him next year. That's what I kind of want to happen. Uh, Gallego said two outs in the eighth before allowing a two out single. He then balks him to second base, <laughs> forgets to just to stop during his stretch. I don't know what the heck he's doing. Then gives up a two out, two strike double. Runner comes around and scores. Nationals take the lead 5-4. Hicks looked great in the ninth inning. What was it, seven pitches? And then he got dinged up for two runs on three hits in the 10th. Uh, Ghost Runner starts at second. Uh, give credit to the Nationals that inning, too. Like, they hit some decent pitches there and just found holes. Um, Hicks drops to 1-6 and six on the year. Offensively, all five runs come via the home run. Newt's solo shot last night before the uh, rain delay. That was his sixth of the year. You get a three-run dinger today by Donovan, uh, his 10th long fly. That was on a phenomenal nine-pitch at bat. That was my favorite part of the whole game. That was so cool, watching Brendan Donovan just battle, battle, and battle. And then on that ninth pitch, he catches that slider, drives it over the wall in right field, ties the game up in the fifth inning. Um, and then Wilson Contreras hits a solo home run. He had a couple balls real hard. He lined that one out to the wall in center field, which uh, I thought they said StatCast had it at like 114. That was a missile off of Contreras' bat. And then he drives one uh, opposite field solo shot in the 11th uh, for his 11th of the season. Did that in the eighth inning to tie the game up again. But um, – not enough offense when your pitching gives up seven runs. Goldie, Arnato, Gorman, Walker all go 0 for 12 with uh, six strikeouts combined. So not great. But we got game two tonight. So we'll watch that. Uh, Steven Matz will be getting start the start tonight for the uh, for the Cardinals. So um, we've got that to watch this evening. We're having a pizza party at my my mom's house tonight. So we got the whole crew came from uh, out of town to uh, to enjoy this game. And then we're all going to the game. On Sunday, we'll be out in freeze landing. So uh, looking forward to that. But, um, you know, more of the same for the Cardinals. Hey, don't get upset about it, okay? We're, we're excited about the fact that we're going to get some turnover here, probably moving into the trade deadline. So uh, let me know your thoughts and comments down below on YouTube. Obviously, you can hit me up on Twitter. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason, and I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.